Hello everybody and welcome to my shop. Tonight we're going to start working on a new pen blank. I saw this idea on uh, the internet, it might have been Facebook, and I thought, wow, I, I think I can figure that out and do that. So tonight I'm going to try to make a new custom blank. I think you're really going to like it. I'm just going to turn, I'm just going to make the blanks. I don't know that I'll turn them into pins yet. I've got some blanks ready. We're going to go ahead and get the laminate out and we're going to start working on these new style pin blanks that I want to share with you. But before I do, there is one thing I want to, I want to share with you guys. Um, I did get to spend a little bit of time in the shop over the holidays and let me show you what I did. New light over the lathe, new lights in the shop. We have tons of light flooding the shop. I'm not done yet. I've got one more light that's gonna go over my, my table on this side of the shop, and now you can see everything. So I'm really excited about this. I'm hoping it's gonna allow me to make better videos for you. That's enough about the lights. Let's go ahead and get started on this new pen blank. I grabbed some pin blanks and I sort of paired them up to be somewhat contrasting woods. A little maple and walnut, uh, cherry and uh, looks like oak. I've got maple and walnut here, two pieces of oak, and I got a piece of walnut and oak. I also grabbed a couple of veneers. I've got a maple, a couple of cherries, and walnut. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to make multiple blanks instead of just making one because I would like to eventually turn several pins. So what we're going to do is really I'll choose, for example, this set. And this is the one I'll focus on for the video. And at the end, I'll show you all five of the blanks. But we will really just film the making of this maple and walnut blank. I taped each set of blanks as tightly as I could with some painter's tape. Now I'm going to go over to the scroll saw and begin cutting. I took a long seven millimeter pen tube and I laid it roughly down the center of my blanks and I drew a line on either side of it just to kind of give me a reference point. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cut. I don't have to stay exactly on those lines but I'm going to cut a squiggly line right down each line. We'll cut the line on the right then we'll tape the two blanks back together. We'll cut the line on the left and then we will take and reverse. We'll put the, we'll mix the maple and walnut pieces together so that this top blank will have a walnut center and the bottom blank will have a maple center and we'll glue those up and let them dry thoroughly before we go to our next step. We've completely cut through both of our blanks. What we're gonna do now is clean up some of the dust between the blanks. We'll get them taped back together, and then we're gonna come in and cut down the second line on this side of the blank. With the blank tightly taped up, I'm ready to make my second cut. For contrast on the maple and walnut blank, I'm going to use a little cherry veneer and I'm going to cut some roughly three quarter of an inch strips to glue between the two blanks or the two sections of blank. I've removed the tape from my blanks and I've cut my cherry veneer strips down to roughly the same length as the blanks. What I want to do now is remove the center section from each blank and swap it. We're also going to put a piece of veneer between each of the blanks. I'm going to lather these up with Tight Bond 2 
And to get the clamping pressure I need to really get the veneer into all of the curves in the blank, I'm going to use vices instead of clamps. With vices, I can really torque these down and mash these blanks back together. I've had good luck in the past. I do have a second vise. It's out of the frame. So we're going to get both of these glued up and we'll come back when the glue is dry and move on with the next step. I've got both of my blanks glued up and in clamps. The glue has had sufficient time to dry on my blanks. What I want to do now is some of the glue ran and you can kind of see little glue marks on the sides of the blank. I'm just going to take some sandpaper. It's 120 grit. I'm going to lightly scuff it and just get rid of any, any bumps because I want to be able to put these blanks together, the two uncut sides, and I need them to lie smoothly on one another. So any, any rough areas, you just want to sand off. Now what I want to do is go ahead and tape the blanks up, the two uncut sides to one another, just like we did before. We're going to lay our tube on here, draw our two lines, take it back to the scroll saw and repeat exactly what we did in the first step. I'll come back and show these to you once I've got them cut, glued up, and the glue is dry, and we'll go on to the next step. I've gone ahead and made the cuts on my blank, and I've inserted the laminate between the slices, once again alternating slices, and I've got them glued up and drying. In the essence of full disclosure, I want you to know that I grabbed three additional sheets of veneer. And the reason why I did this is when I started, I counted for two cuts on each blank. I didn't think that I was going to be flipping the blanks and making the second set of cuts. I didn't add those in. So these are needed for the second round of cuts on the blanks. I need to flatten out one side of each of my blanks so that I can tape them together and begin my next series of cuts. And to do that, I'm just going to use a dot of hot glue and I'm going to stick it to a nice flat piece of MDF. After a couple of seconds, this will be dry enough, I can run it right through my planer. With one side flattened on each of the blanks, I can now put the two flat sides together and tape the blank back up. This time around, I'm gonna go ahead and tape all the way down the length of the blank. With the blank taped up, I want to come in and we're going to number the blank. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That ought to be good enough. With the blank numbered, now what I want to do is cut out each of these sections. And we're just going to randomly cut like we did up the sides of the blank and then we'll flip the pieces, the bottom piece to the top and the top piece to the bottom on every other one and glue them back together. Using the numbers I put down the front of the blank, I was able to reassemble it. What I need to do now is remove the tape, keeping the pieces with each respective blank. With the tape removed, let's alternate every other piece. Now it looks kind of odd because if you remember, we had the two solid faces or the two clean faces facing one another. So the cuts are reversed. I need to flip every other piece. And this will give a much cleaner, see how much better it fits together. It's 
time to get the glue and start gluing this together. As I cut the veneers for the original two blanks, I had a bunch of cutoffs and I hung on to them. What I want to do now is I'm going to glue each of these blanks together, but I'm going to use these pieces of veneer between each of the sections. Since the pieces are all different sizes, it's going to be tough to use a jig to glue these up. So what my plan is, is just to take some clamps and we'll just glue two pieces together at a time. And once the glue tacks up well enough to hold, then we can take the double sections and glue them together, so on and so on, until the blank is complete. Before we start, I'm going to take my cutoffs and I'm going to actually trim them down to be just a little bit smaller uh, so we don't have all this waste. I'm going to turn it so that the grain runs uh, this way and the reason why is it'll give a little easier as I clamp it. We'll just kind of eyeball it here to line it up. And let's get a clamp on it. All right, I'm happy with that. I'm gonna lay it back aside, let it dry, and we're gonna go ahead and clamp the rest of these pieces up. I've made four separate glue ups, each consisting of two sections of a blank. I've kept the clamps in order so that it'll be easier to line the double sections up when I get ready to glue them together after about 20 minutes of drying. My blanks have had about 40 minutes to dry and the little double sections look really nice. So what I'm gonna do now is start gluing these together. And I'll just go ahead and get everything glued up and come back and show you what it looks like in a couple of seconds. I've got my doubles glued up. I'm going to let the glue tack up and set really well. And then we'll come back and glue these two sections together. And last but not least, we'll go ahead and glue the end pieces on. The glue on my blanks has sufficiently dried where I felt comfortable taking it out of the clamps. What I want to do now is I'm going to go ahead and glue the two end pieces onto these blanks. And we'll come back later and glue these blanks to these blanks. I just made the final glue up on my maple and walnut blanks. Once this glue dries, uh, we'll let them set overnight. And tomorrow, I think we're going to try to turn at least one of them into a pin. I'm all set up to turn this blank. I'll come back and show you what it looks like, and then we'll get it put into a pin kit. Here's a quick shot of the blank right before sanding. It looks really good. You can see there are a few low areas like that. I'm going to see what they look like after sanding. That, that's really just the veneer tearing out. But uh, we'll see what they look like after sanding, and I think I can probably fill those with a little CA, and they should virtually disappear. Here's a quick peek at the finished blank. Good news and bad news with this blank. The good news is, just take a look at it. It's absolutely amazing. I love how this blank turned out. There's just so much contrast and so much, there's so much activity going on. It just looks beautiful. The bad news is, while I was sanding it, I lost a piece at the end of the blank. So I grabbed the CA glue and put a little glue on the tube, glued it back in, went back to sending after I hit it with some accelerator, and then all of a sudden it hits me. I hope that wasn't the end with the loose tube that needs to be removable for the modified slimline to work, and sure enough, it was. So the tube is no longer removable from this pin. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to order a seven millimeter slimline click pin kit and then we'll assemble this pin as a click pin. I'd like to thank you for hanging out with me tonight. I can't believe how well this turned out. It was very exciting to see it on the lathe and to see it actually become this from this. <laughs> it took a little bit of work to get this, to build this blank, but it's definitely worth it. 
I'm a little disappointed at myself because when, when the blank had the, the blowout, and it was not a bad blowout, but I went to fix it, and I just, I thought so many things out ahead of time, but when it came to fixing the blank, it never even occurred to me that the tube needed to be removable. So I'm kicking myself for that. But uh, I do have a seven millimeter mechanical pencil and I thought about putting that in here. However, this, this pen is going to go to someone and that particular person requested a seven millimeter pencil. So what I'm gonna do is buy a seven millimeter click and uh, I'll go ahead and insert the, those components in this blank and, and they'll have a click pin instead of a, a twist. And to be honest with you, um, I've made a lot of the modified twist slim lines, and sometimes they can be difficult to get the mechanism removed to replace your ink, and they can be fickle once in a while uh, when you twist them on and off. If you get, it, if you get your uh, mechanism pushed up in there just a little too far, it can get tight. And I think the click, I've been using personally a click mechanical pencil, and I absolutely love it. It's just really, really a great, uh, a great setup. And that's what the way I think I'm going to go. So one last peek at the blank. I'll keep my hand back there so you can kind of see it. I think it looks absolutely gorgeous. Thank you for hanging out with me tonight. I want you to know that you are always welcome in my shop. Come back and see me again real soon. Have a great evening, everybody.